Father, and with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We have more than one account of the blind man. There's also more than one blind man. And then Luke is very specific to point out that this man's in Jericho. I recommend that any time you hear Jericho mentioned in the scriptures, pay attention. What's so special about Jericho? Well, nothing really specifically. But a lot of good things happen in Jericho. A lot of incredible things. Not things that would you would say uh, had fireworks with them or whatever, but a lot of salvific salvation moments are happening in Jericho. We have Rahab the harlot, who when the Jews were coming to conquer the lands that the Lord was to give to them, the promised lands, they were feared because they were t conquering the land of the Philistines. And Jericho was a Philistine city. And Rahab the harlot, she, she was a harlot. She was arguably uh, not somebody that would be considered among the, the Jewish people uh, to have a good job. Um, she lived in the walls of the city, and the scouts that they sent ahead to Jericho were hidden by her because the governor of Jericho had found out that they were there and he was going to have them killed. So she hid them in the walls where she and her family dwelt. And they were grateful to her. And she says, I ask only that, that my family be spared. Salvation came to her house. And she and her family were spared. And she, by the way, is one of the people in the line of descent in the uh, genealogy of Jesus Christ. Pretty cool. When we hear Christ moving among the people and walking into Jericho, we hear him say, Zacchaeus, come down out of that sycamore tree, for I will come and dine at your house today. And salvation came to that house again, to another house in Jericho. We all know the story of Zacchaeus. That's a good one. I remember that from when I was four in Sunday school or vacation Bible school or whatever. I've always kept that, that, that story close by. And today we have the blind man sitting outside of Jericho. Christ is on his way to Jericho again. Pay attention to Jericho. These Jericho moments are moments of specific salvation where Christ declares publicly that salvation is offered and taken and accepted. These people ignore the blind man as they walk by. He's wondering what the fuss is about. And they say, well, it's Jesus Christ. And he yells out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he says, oh, shut up. Nobody wants to talk to you. And he yelled all the more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And it says, Christ stopped and stood still. He made very clear that this was to be paid attention to. And he demanded that the blind men be brought to him. And he says, now what do you want me to do for you? Well, duh. That I might see. This blind man had sat by the side of the road begging all his life. He couldn't see. He was at the mercy of passers-by and those who were kind to him and knew him, perhaps knew his family, wondered what they had done wrong, that they'd have a blind kid. But they, they had mercy on him. But he was a beggar. And he was tired of not being able to see. And Christ says, Then see, your faith has made you well. And he saw. And it said the people were amazed at it. They saw him giving thanks. And they were amazed at what they saw. You see, salvation came to him that day. Not because the Lord restored his ocular abilities. That was... You know, in comparison to everything that Jesus was doing, you could say almost a party trick. Not really, but it, it was a miracle, of course. But what was happening to this man, who had no sight, he was given sight through faith. And salvation was declared unto him. And his faith made him glorify God. And the people that saw it were amazed. These aren't the only three times Jericho is mentioned in Scripture. 
But these are three moments that we really need to reflect on, especially when we hear this gospel. You see, we go about our existence blind, often, often willfully blind. Not with just blinders on, we, we obliterate our sight, foolishly. And then we call out to Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. What do we want him to do for us? We want him to lead us out of darkness into light. We want him to restore the sight that made us see the right path to salvation. The ability to follow him in faith and humility. What do you want that I do for you? Make me to see. And when he does and restores us, our glorifying him should be not a spectacle to others, but an inspiration. When we return to our baptismal promise, to restore our, our baptismal garment and confession, our gratitude should be such that our glorifying God is impressive to see. Not that it's a spectacle, but that it's true. That the humility engendered by being truly shown how to see should be palpable and contagious. We need to continuously have our Jericho moments. When we are blind, let salvation come to our house. Through faith may we see. It is the Lord's good will to give us the kingdom. It is offered freely, and we may take it and make it our own. He gives us his, his very image. He takes on our image and gives us his. And welcomes us into the kingdom. He kills the fatted calf and puts a ring on our finger and dresses us in an eternal cloak of holiness. It is his good will that we may see truth and take it into our hearts and participate in it. It's done through humility. What do you want him to do for you? I can't answer that question. But if we call out to him, let us say the very same thing as the blind man, that I may see. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.